Hey guys, it's Alexandra from ilovenots.com. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a pumpkin leaf. I got these pumpkins from Dollar Tree a little while ago, and I've been wanting to make a leaf that I can put on it. So I pulled out my greens and I got to work. This is a modified version of my sunflower pattern. I was pretty excited at how easy it was just to modify it a little bit. And I get these fun little pumpkin leaves. Depending on the size yarn that you work with and the size crochet hook that you use, you will get different size leaves. Over here on the left, I used Wee Crochet Dishy Yarn, which is 100% cotton worsted weight yarn. It is a little bit on the lighter side. Lily Sugar and Cream works up a little bit bigger, it's thicker. But the dark green here is called Jalapeno, and I used an H8 five millimeter hook for that. The light color is called Honeydew and I used a G6 4.25 millimeter hook. The difference isn't drastic but it's big enough that I love it. So this dark green one is about three and a quarter inches wide by three inches tall and this light green one is about three inches wide by two and three quarter inches tall. Over here on the bottom, this is Emma's Yarn Comfy Cotton DK. It is a lightweight yarn. This is 50% superwash merino wool and 50% cotton. It's lovely. I love it. It is from my local yarn shop for pearls. And it is hand dyed there in their shop. The darker green color is called Canopy. And I use the five millimeter hook with that one. The lighter color is called Freshly Cut and I used the G6 4.25 millimeter hook. The darker green one came out to about three and one eighth inches wide by two and seven eight inches tall and the lighter green came out to about two and seven eight inches wide by two and three eighth inches tall. You can experiment with all kinds of yarns and hook sizes to get all kinds of different sizes depending on the project that you are working. My plan for this is to take these little pumpkins, put one here, I'm going to hot glue it, and then stack this other one on top, I think. I need to play around with it a little bit more. I'm just not really sure how I want to do that, but I'm thinking that that's what I want to do. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start with a slip knot. So I've brought the yarn over my fingers here. I'm going to wrap it around my index finger two times. I'm holding tension with my thumb and my middle finger. Then I'll pull the loop that's on the left up and over the other one, but not off my finger. Then I'll pull the loop that's on the left now up over the other one and off my finger. I'll insert my crochet hook into that loop on my finger and pull it off. Then I'll hold the working yarn in my right hand and pull the short tail into my left so that this knot will go up to normal tension. I'm going to start with a chain 5. To chain, we yarn over and pull through the loop on our hook. Yarn over, pull through the loop on our hook. Yarn over, pull through the loop on our hook. That gives me three chains. Now I have five. I'm going to slip stitch join to the first chain to form a ring. That's the very beginning chain down there that I started with. Insert my hook right into the center. Yarn over, pull through that stitch and the loop that's on my hook. And now that gives me a ring right there in the center that I can work into. The stitch we just slip stitched to will also have a hole because that knot is not secured. We don't want to work into that. We will secure that later, but we'll work into the very center. I'm going to start with a chain one. And then I'm going to work 12 half double crochets into that center ring. As I work into it, I'm going to hold the beginning tail end to the back of my chains so that when I crochet, I crochet over it and capture both of those. To half double crochet, we yarn over, insert our hook right into the center ring. You'll have your chains on your hook as well as that beginning tail end. Yarn over, pull through. There are three loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through all three loops. Yarn over, 
Insert your hook into the center ring, yarn over, pull through, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all three loops. Yarn over, insert your hook into the center ring, yarn over, pull through, three loops, yarn over, pull through all three loops. We're going to continue working until we have 12 half double crochets. Just remember to continue to hold your tail end to the back of the chain so you can crochet over that. There's 12 half double crochets. If you're working with a slightly thicker yarn, it may seem like you don't have enough room to work all your stitches. You can always hold the fabric with your left hand and pull the stitches down the chain. They will squish together and you will find you'll have more room there. We're going to slip stitch join to the very first half double crochet of the round. And if you're not sure which one that is, you can use these V-shaped stitches on the top to count backwards. One, two, three, four four, five, all the way around till you get to 12. That will be our first stitch. We'll insert our hook under both loops of that stitch, yarn over, pull through that stitch and the loop on our hook to complete a slip stitch. And that center ring there, you can hold the fabric in your right hand, pull on that tail end with your left, and that hole will close up. And we'll better secure that closed when we weave in our ends. Round one is finished with 12 half double crochets. For round two, we're going to increase, so we'll end up with 24 half double crochets. And we increase here so that our round gets larger but continues to lay flat. We'll start with a chain one. I like to split my beginning increase so that I work one stitch here in the first stitch to the left of the beginning chain. And my second stitch from that increase is in the same stitch but to the right of the beginning chain. I do that for two reasons. One, it helps keep my seam straight. I know this is only a couple rounds so it doesn't matter if your seam is straight. But it just keeps it straight and unnoticeable and I love that. It doesn't travel. But it also prevents a gap here to the right. If you work two stitches there into the first stitch you finish your last increase over here and sometimes there's a little gap right there. By splitting my beginning increase, it's helping my seam and also preventing that gap. So I'm going to show you how I do it. This is how I work all my increases. We're going to half double crochet into the very first stitch. I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook into the first stitch, picking up both loops from that V shape. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three loops. I'm going to continue working two half double crochets into each stitch all the way around. When I get over here, I'm going to have 23 half double crochets and then I'll work one more here in the next stitch and that'll complete my 24th stitch as well as my first set of increases. If you are more comfortable doing it the more traditional way of not splitting your increases and just working two stitches into that first stitch, go ahead and do that. As long as we end up with 24 stitches in the end, it doesn't matter. So for this next stitch here, half double crochet into that stitch, and then half double crochet again into that same exact stitch. That is two half double crochets worked into that same stitch. That's how we're going to continue working all the way around. And there's my 23rd stitch. I have one more stitch left. I'm going to work it into that very next stitch that you see there, which is going to be just to the right of the beginning chain one. 
and then I'm going to slip stitch join to the very first half double crochet of the round, insert into the stitch, yarn over, pull through that stitch, and the loop on my hook. And now round two is complete with 24 half double crochets. For round three, we're going to start with a chain one. We're going to skip the first three stitches, so skipping the stitch that my chain one is attached to, and the next two, and in the next stitch there, we're going to work several stitches in there to create what I would describe as a petal for the leaf. The first stitch is going to be a single crochet. Insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over, pull through, two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through both loops then half double crochet into that same exact stitch. Then we'll work two double crochets into that stitch as well, yarn over, insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over, pull through, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over, pull through, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. Chain two, we're going to create a pico here, which is a little point. We're going to slip stitch into the first chain. So insert your hook right into the center. I like to pick up both loops, the back bump and this leg closest to you. Yarn over, pull through that stitch and through the loop on your hook. Then we're going to work a double crochet back into that very same stitch. followed by a half double crochet into the same stitch. Then we'll skip the next two stitches, slip stitch into the next stitch, skip the next two stitches, and in the next stitch we'll work the center petal. We're going to start with a double crochet. Then we'll work two treble crochets into that stitch, yarn over two times so you have three loops on your hook, insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over, pull through, there are now four loops, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over two times, insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over, pull through, four loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two chain two, slip stitch to the very first chain. Again when I insert my hook here I like to pick up the back bump and that left side of the chain so I have two legs on my hook. Then we'll reverse that, two treble crochets and a double crochet. Let's work one more treble together, yarn over two times, insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over, pull through, four loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. Then we'll skip the next two stitches, slip stitch into the next stitch, Skip the next two stitches and into that next stitch we're going to work the third petal which will be a reverse of this first one. We're going to start with a half double crochet. Then we'll double crochet into that same stitch. Chain two. Slip stitch in the first chain. Two double crochets into that same stitch. half double crochet into that same stitch and then single crochet into that same stitch. Insert your hook into that stitch, yarn over, pull through, two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through both loops. Skip the next two stitches, slip stitched in the next stitch. And we'll finish this out with a couple stitches here along the bottom. Single crochet into the next stitch, insert your hook into that stitch, yarn over, pull through, two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through both loops, half double crochet into the next stitch, slip stitch into the next stitch, half double crochet into the next stitch, 
single crochet into the next stitch. Slip stitch join to the beginning chain one, insert your hook into the center of the chain, yarn over, pull through that stitch and the loop that's on your hook. And we can fasten off. And I'll pull up on this loop to break it. Insert into the same exact stitch from the wrong side to the right side. Yarn over and pull that tail end through to the back. And our little leaf is done. So we just need to weave in our ends. Go ahead and grab your tapestry needle and I'll meet you back here. All right, I have threaded the center ring tail into my tapestry needle. For the first pass of this, I'm going to work all the way around clockwise until I get back to the same stitch. And then I'm going to work a couple more stitches past it. So there I am back to the beginning. I'm going to insert into about two or three other stitches here. And then I'm going to hold the fabric in between my thumb and my middle finger. And I'm going to pull this tail end with my right hand and it's going to close up that ring. Don't pull too tight because depending on your fiber, you can snap the yarn. I'm going to secure this with two more passes. I'm going to work just straight through vertically here through several of the stitches. When I enter and exit my stitches, I do not pick up the whole entire stitch on my needle. I insert my needle in the center of the stitch, breaking it in half so that it captures my yarn better. So I'm just going to work up through several of the stitches I just worked through breaking the stitch upon exit in half. Give it a tug and then rotate and work again into a nearby stitch, breaking it in half up through several of those same stitches and break my last stitch in half when I exit and then give it a tug. And now I can fasten off. Three is my magic number. If you feel comfortable after two, you can fasten off. If you need a fourth pass, go ahead and do it. Whatever you feel the most secure with. So I'll be working three passes with this last tail end as well. And I'm going to work breaking my stitch in half when I enter and exit. And I'm just gonna work vertically through these stitches right here up to the center and back. I like to use my fingers to manipulate the fabric so that pull doesn't bunch up my fabric. And I'll fasten this off. And here is our adorable little leaf. And here are my two little leaves together. This darker one I used the 5mm hook and this lighter one I used a 4.25 millimeter hook and I love how it just varies it just enough. You'll find the written pattern for this linked in the description box below. 
please smash that like button and hit subscribe. And I'll catch you in the next video.